Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammie, and welcome back to my homestead. Well, guys, I have some meat birds here that are actually four weeks old, and they are doing wonderful. I originally started to make a video as they grow from stage to stage, which I do have some videos on that. But I decided there's lots of videos out there showing the stages of how the meat birds do. But I just want to show you how my meat birds are doing, and they're doing wonderful. They're into the chicken tractor. I am moving them around, which is what I did with the last chickens that was not meat birds. They were just regular yard birds, and uh, they did wonderfully. The grass here has definitely been fertilized. It's growing, I want to say like a weed, because a lot of it is 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 weeds but it is a lot of grass and a lot of clover which the chickens do love so let's take a look at these meat birds so there's 21 meat birds and there's also one rock and you can actually look at the rock and tell the size difference they're the same age but yet, they are so much bigger than that black chicken, which is trying to get to the water. And she's patient, but she's like, these other ones, they're just, I want to say they're just little hogs. They just, you know, so she's patient. She finally got in there to get her some water. And yes, they're a little dirty. Uh, I'm moving the chicken tractor. I'm having to move it now about twice a day. Uh, they love to lay around, so when they poop, they lay around. The good thing is, is they drink about four gallons of water a day. So this container is five gallons. And I have this feeder here that I bought, and I paid $7 for, and it's been wonderful. Now, I do, like, wet the feed, like, overnight. Some people do it two or three days. But here, because of the humidity and the heat and everything that we do have here, it, I noticed that it's always starting to ferment. I don't want to get to where it's sour and anything like that. So today I didn't. I just put the dry feed in there. And this bucket, a lot of people would like pour it onto the ground. But I found out that it really does better if I put it in this, moisten it a little bit better. There's, there's really no waste. It, it just, uh, and I do come out here and make sure it's going through the, the slots so they can be sure they get the right, right amount of food. So this morning they had like a gallon of water in here and I left, I had to go to church and I said, well, I'll water them when I came back. When I came back, they didn't have any water, which usually I don't do it like that. But I thought, you know, being gone for a couple hours, a gallon will be okay. But, you know, obviously not. Um, it was it was fine, you know. It's not going to hurt anything for them. They're definitely drinking it up now. They got five gallons of water. Into this chicken tractor I made, I haven't got to put the wheels on it yet. But so there's my ropes there. And also at the top, they're able to lay in the sun. I noticed that they will lay in the sun. Some won't. You know, they like someone's back there laying into the shade. And so they, they got pretty much a lot of freedom here. I'd like to eventually kind of extend this, maybe put a poultry netting around which I do have and see how they do but um but when I do that I want to make sure that I'm here because of predators uh they do do um I don't I'm not complaining about the the eating I think it's great maybe because I've had so many chickens that I'm used to that quantity of food going out but they do poop a lot so I've noticed that because they like to lay it around like they are doing they just like to lay around at time get get full and they'll lay around and eat that clover and eat the grass it's got little seeds onto it and they're laying into it so I don't really don't like that but so I'm just gonna be moving it more and which just gives them fresh grass to eat but I just want to give you a quick update on them they're doing wonderful but I can't believe how big they are they're waddling they are really really big compared to size it's a, it's, it's it's tremendous a lot a big difference to compare to a yard bird and to a cornish broiler now you can take yard birds and raise them up it, it just takes like probably about eight six to nine months 
uh, to when you can process them really to have some meat on them. Maybe you could process them sooner, but you know, really they say, you know, nine months for roosters and you know, I processed mine and they had they was pretty big. I was I was amazed. Now I believe a majority of these are females. I decided to go with females. They say that roosters, if you get the roosters they're of course roosters are bigger but they'll have more meat but these things are already huge. So twenty one of the Cornish broilers. And uh, some of them, I, I believe one of them, a couple of them is going to uh, be a rooster. So, but that's fine. So guys, I just want to give you a quick update. On how these birds are doing. I got my new chicken plucker in. Last time I processed some chickens, uh, when the first bird, a brand new chicken plucker, it had quit. And I was standing there with this bird, and I was like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I have 15, 15 other roosters to process. It was either go forward, get rid of the birds, quit. You know, sometimes if we quit, we never really find ourselves with the time or able to get to that place, or maybe we just quit. Well, I'm so glad I didn't quit. I continued on. It took me longer. And so I was so happy that I didn't, I persevered and I, I did do that. And um, it just kind of, it, it, I can't explain it unless you've been through it. It's, uh, it really makes you feel more self-reliant, that you're not relying onto a system, that if something happens, you're, you're able to make it. And on, on top of that, raising up your own birds, that you know what they're eating, what's going in them, what's going on with them. Like, I'm raising up these right here, and uh, I'm watching them. I'm feeding them. I know what's going on with them. I know what's going in them. And so, I'm just it's just a good feeling to cross a bridge that you thought you would never cross. We're at a time and a place that we need to cross bridges. We don't need to be staying in the same place. This is a time and a season that we are to do a new thing. This is year has been a year of everything I've been doing. It's been a new thing. It's been, I look and it's one new thing after another new thing after another new thing. And I believe God has got us in the place. It's time to do a new thing. So I would encourage you into your journey of your life to try to do a new thing. And then when you get to that crossroads, if you feel like, hey, I don't know if I can do this like I did, should I just take and go bury this chicken and, you know, call someone and go ahead and get rid of these chickens because I got. I got 21 biddies, 22 actually biddies here, two more is coming, you know, should I, what should I do? I mean, I, when you're homesteading by yourself, it, you know, you, you find yourself at those crossroads because there's no other helping hand except the Lord, and He always helps us. There's no other helping hand that's there and go and do something other else for you. So you got to make up your mind if you're going to homestead. This is the way I'm going to live. This is, this is my life. This is my passion. This is my desire. This is my dream. You know, it's, it is a calling. It is a way to live. And it's something that you can't get away from. And so I'm so glad I crossed that bridge. I was blessed to be able to get, send that uh, chicken plucker back, even though I had it for six months, which was they only gave a 30-day return, which was just a blessing itself. And then I ordered another chicken uh, a plucker. And I've never used one before, but you know what? So I was plucking them by hand. Which, if you get get down to it, it only takes about eight minutes. Or so, about eight minutes, you get at it. You know, then 30, 40 seconds to eight minutes is like a big difference when you got a lot of birds. So, I looked at this chicken plucker that came in. I was like, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. This is going to do the trick. This is, I was just astonished on how big this chicken plucker was. I was like, wow, you know, this is definitely going to get the job done. And, um, I, and, you know, I said, gosh, you know, now I could do, you know, the other one, is, you could do two, but it wasn't as big as this one. And maybe that's why it quit, but it only ran for 30 seconds. And it, I mean, it was actually the first 10 seconds. The first time I turned it on, I knew something was wrong. But this one right here, I just like, you know, they say you could do two or three birds, preferably two. I was like, yeah, I can do two in these. This is, this is great. This is going to make, make it so much faster and easier. 
So guys, just want to give you a quick update that we are moving forward onto a new thing and I would encourage you onto your journey to try to do a new thing. Where it's container gardening, small gardening, raised bed, start somewhere because it seems like once you start in that path or you get in this, this this path it just seems to grow and your vision your dream it just grows and grows and grows you know um you know i i just i can't explain it except that it just is like your vision grows and grows you start out with two or three biddies you learn those two or three biddies next thing you know you're getting 12 biddies and then next thing you know, you're like me, you have to kind of put a hold on that. And next thing I know, I had 70 chickens. So it just grows. And then my garden, it, you know, I've always had a little garden or garden of some type, or, you know, I've always had a garden. And I noticed that my garden just grows and my vision grows and I want my garden to grow and it just grows and grows. And then you see, and now I'm at this place of processing birds and I just, I just, I mean, it's a good feeling. I can't, I know for those who don't understand that, you just have to walk that path to understand it. So I would encourage you to get on the path and walk a new path and walk into your destiny, walk into your dreams, walk into your vision, walk into greatness and walk into a path of righteousness. Okay, guys, remember to make it a great day. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please give me a thumbs up on my videos. Uh, I, that creates them to get out there into the rhythm of YouTube. If not, they just kind of stay stuck. If you put a like out there, it's like they let they lets them know that someone is liking the videos. If you subscribe and hit that bell, because you'll know when I load up a video, because I don't, you know, know when I'm going to load up a video. Uh, sometimes I can get in the rhythm of it, but it takes a lot of time when you're doing these videos. So... I'm going to try to work to a place that maybe I could do one video. My goal would be one video a week. So I was trying to do two or three or four or five, you know, because but really when you're homesteading, you find yourself doing so many different things. You're like, okay, I do a video of this, do a video of this. And then before I know, I got all these videos and I never could get around to getting them out there. So please subscribe, like, share, and give me that big, big, big thumbs up. And thank you so much for being there and being my friend. God bless you.